2022 has been a mixed year. With the cinemas finally being active after almost two years, while some movies turned out to be pretty decent, many were extremely terrible and disappointing. However, quite a few were amazing and great in their own cinematic and unique ways. So in today's video, I will be ranking the top 5 best movies from 2022. Again, this is my very own personal opinion and let me know in the comments what you think were the 5 best movies from 2022. At number 5, we have everything everywhere or at once. This movie is a unique, colorful, well edited and well written masterpiece. I was really excited to watch this movie since I've heard from many people how good this movie is and it surely did not disappoint. It has perfectly timed comedy as well as perfectly timed emotional scenes which is pretty rare to see these days. Not only that, this movie was successful in clearly delivering its message too. Through the quick and rare edited scenes that might be considered chaotic to some, it's amazing how at the core of all the chaos there is a deeper meaning about family and bonds. This movie was certainly a once in a lifetime experience that I doubt there will be another movie like this. Man, there's no way to describe this movie other than the word masterpiece. You, Mr. Presley, made you told. Elvis Presley must be my favorite musical artist of all time, and the movie solely about him directed by none other than Baz Norman surely excited me. And I understand why some wouldn't like this movie because you know, Tom Hanks. Like seriously I love Tom Hanks but buddy, this movie just wasn't it. It was honestly pretty absurd considering how the real Parker didn't have that accent, and I don't know how and where Tom Hanks came up with the idea of the accent but it was so weird. However, the colors and the cinematography of Baz Norman was beautiful to see and I really don't understand why people don't like this movie so much. And gosh, Austin Butler was the best part of this movie. I know many were very doubtful when he was first casted but now, I think it's safe to say no one could have played better. By the end of the movie, I legit forgot the actual face of Elvis Presley and kept seeing Austin Butler as the one and only Elvis Presley. Yeah, he was just that good. This movie isn't perfect, obviously, it's very far from it in fact, and everything everywhere all at once deserves to be above this by far. But I just genuinely enjoyed this more. Maybe it was Austin Butler, maybe it was because I like Elvis Presley, I don't know. But whatever it was, it really got me and I enjoyed this movie a lot. Hence, this is the fourth best movie of the year for me. Oh my god. If you haven't watched this movie yet, I beg you, please do. Hans and the Rising Dragon is set in 1592 when Korea battled Japan and revolves around General Yi Sun-shin, the hero of Korea. And oh man is it amazing. It had everything I could have ever asked for and yes I'm Korean too and this movie was just beautiful. Not only that, I actually loved Park Hae-il as Yi Sun-shin, I personally think he's more fitting for the role than Chairman Sheik and I recommend this movie to everyone. Literally, everyone. It's beautiful and very accurate to historical facts as well. So please, please watch it if you haven't already. This is the third best movie I've watched this year. Okay, if you've seen my previous video about Batman, you must know how much I love Batman. And as a big Batman fan, this movie was amazing and easily the best comic book movie of the year. The cinematography, the pace, the plot, the entire movie was amazing. This was a perfect Batman movie. Unlike Zack Snyder's murderer Batman everybody seems to love all of a sudden, this Batman felt like Batman. He was no murderer, he was a detective. Vengeance, a hero. This was a reminder for me that superhero movies can be cinema. This was a reminder who Batman truly is supposed to be, who he's meant to be, a guardian of Gotham City. This movie perfectly captured that. Not only that, I do not think additions like Catwoman were forced at all, or the characters had their time to shine, therefore were perfectly balanced. I also think Robert Pattinson carried it as Bruce Wayne and part of me was really glad we got to see more of a broken orphan kinda side of Bruce Wayne considering how this Batman is quite new at this job. So this movie was truly fantastic and I dare say this movie is a masterpiece. At least to me, 
and I'm pretty sure to lots of other Batman fans out there too. So yep, this is the second best movie I've watched this year. Y'all actually see. Wow. Before I review number one, I'd like to mention some of the movies that unfortunately couldn't make it to the list. First we have Glass Onion The Knives Out Mystery. This movie was really enjoyable and really fun. However, the plot got really predictable by the end of the movie and it really didn't meet up to my expectations. But it's only because of how great the first movie was, the first movie was just something else and yeah, this movie was still enjoyable nonetheless. And second, we have Avatar The Way of Water, the visuals were out of this world and the lore of Pandora was again really solid. However, this movie doesn't really have that makes it different from the first one. In fact, the plot got much simpler and less climatic, so yeah. I think the CGI of the movie was the real hero, doesn't mean it was boring though, like the movie was 3 hours long and I wasn't bored even for a minute. So yeah, an enjoyable movie to watch in the theater. Third we have The Adam Project, it's a very light movie you can watch anytime you want, but it still somehow managed to make you emotional. It was a really enjoyable movie and I had a heck of a time watching it. And fourth we have Minions The Rise of Gr- Okay, I'm sure you guys already guessed it. I mean it when I say Top Gun Maverick was the best cinematic experience I've had in a while. This was a movie. A real movie. I actually preferred this much more than the first one, which is pretty rare for sequels these days. Not only was this a perfect sequel movie, it was a perfect movie by itself. I'd literally do anything to watch this movie for the first time again. The comedy, the action, the plot and the conflict among the characters were all perfectly balanced. God, there's not much to say about this movie because it was just perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. I cannot stress how much I love this movie enough. It literally saved cinema for me. It really did. Literally a perfect movie in every way. Truly, I think this is the movie of the year. And with that being said, thank you for watching and if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to this channel. It really means a lot. Thank you so much and before I let you go, here's number 0 of the list. The movie above all, far superior than any other movies released this year. At number 0 of the list, we have Morbius.